Hey everyone. How's everyone doing? Good? All right, I want to just kind of figure out who I'm talking to right now. Uh, so who here is a Webflow user? Can I get hands? OK, everyone. Uh, OK, uh, who here has used Webflow to build um, or uses to build a marketing site or maybe your portfolio? Is that your main use case? Um, what about product UI design? OK, just a few of you. Cool. OK, cool. So that's, that's sort of what I want to focus on today. Um, so yeah, um, on the agenda today, uh, I want to kind of go over our uh, product team's uh, process when it comes to um, building for Webflow. Uh, I also want to talk about how Webflow fits into that process because um, we're not forced to use Webflow, but we like using Webflow to build Webflow. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so tying into that, I also want, I want to highlight what we like about using Webflow to build Webflow, and then also, which might make Vlad angry, uh, what Webflow isn't good at, because it's not great for everything. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and go over the process. So um, when working on a new feature, uh, we start out in the research phase, and this is when we uh, seek to understand as much about the, um, the feature as possible. So in this phase, we're, we're trying to define the problem. We're figuring out what we're solving for. Uh, we're working with PMs on scope. Um, and we're also trying to identify constraints that we need to work around. Once we're done with research, uh, we move into a, uh, an ideation slash exploration phase. And this is when we basically throw as much paint on the wall as we can and try to see what sticks. Um, a good thing about going about it this way is that we get a lot of bad ideas out of the way early. Um, and out of this process, we aim to kind of get two or three good ideas um, to move on to the uh, design and exploration phase, or design and prototyping phase. And in this phase, um, we sort of bring more fidelity to some of those ideas that we developed in stage two. And uh, we start building simple prototypes. Um, and this is helpful because uh, we try to validate our design decisions uh, as early as possible um, so that we don't bring something that doesn't work or doesn't solve a problem to engineering. Um, we sort of figure that out first. Um, and we sort of b bounce back between steps two and three, or three and four. Um, we prototype something, we bring it to users, we go back to prototyping, we make tweaks. Um, we work on the projects with PMs uh, to make sure the solution stays within scope. Um, and we also get feedback from our peers. And then once we found a solution that we like, that's tested, that's validated, uh, we go ahead and document it for engineers to build. Cool, so where, where does Webflow fit into all this? So going back to this process timeline, um, some of the tools we use along here, uh, research, it's really just in a text editor. Um, we're learning about the, the problem we're trying to solve. Then we typically go into a, um, a, screen a screen design tool like Sketch or Figma, where we can just quickly generate ideas. And then not everyone on the team, but a few of us, uh, we jump straight into Webflow after we um, have figured out which approaches we want to um, develop, and we start building directly in, in Webflow. Uh, and for us, Webflow serves as both a design, prototype, pro prototyping, uh, and even a handoff tool. So that goes all the way to documentation, which we uh, do in Dropbox Paper right now. I want to go over what Webflow is good at and sort of explain why we use Webflow um, for that large portion of the, uh, the process. Uh, so a great thing about Webflow is prototypes are free. Um, when you're working in Webflow, uh, you're not building a mock-up of a site, you're actually building a website. Um, and what's cool about this is that you really get to embrace the constraints of the web. Um, we have a whole uh, library of symbols that we use to actually build out Webflow inside of Webflow. So it kind of gets confusing if I want to go to the ad panel. Sometimes I'll click the fake ad panel or the fake pages panel. Um, <laughs> So it's awesome. Like since we're designing in the tool, we can just publish, and we have a, uh, a URL that we can share with our users, and um, 
test very quickly with. Um, it's really easy to work with realistic data in Webflow. So uh, a few years ago, we came out with the Webflow CMS. And the use case we were solving there uh, was building a way for our users to build things like blogs, uh, portfolios, photo galleries. But it also turns out that the CMS is a great way to uh, leverage um, real or realistic data in your designs. Um, so what we do is we create a lot of our views in Webflow. And then we have these collections that we use to populate those views with actual data. So uh, if you're building an e-commerce store uh, in Webflow, you might have a products collection uh, that you bind to a cart. Um, and yeah, we, using, real, using data like this uh, I think makes your design stronger because I feel like a lot of designers have a tendency to make their designs look really pretty, uh, make sure that text doesn't fall to a second line. But by using real data, you're sort of forced to uh, make sure your design's bulletproof. No more redlining. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with what redlining is, um, it's basically the process of taking some sort of final design or UI and measuring it out pixel by pixel so that your engineer has uh, measurements to work with. <laughs> um, but since we're designing our UI in Webflow, um, we keep a repository of UI elements that we use when building out new features. So if I'm working on some sort of uh, Webflow e-commerce, um, you know, onboarding flow, um, I'll actually add this component to our internal design library. And then when it's time to document, I just send our engineer uh, a link to this component. Cool. So now... Now that I've fluffed up Webflow uh, adequately, uh, I'll talk about some stuff that Webflow isn't great at. Um, so at least for me, um, Webflow isn't a great tool for quick ideation and exploration. Um, you can't move as quickly as you can in a tool like Sketch or, or Figma. Um, Webflow facilitates a very intentional workflow. Uh, where you place a specific, a specific type of element, you give it a class, you add styles. Um, it's a lot easier to work with Webflow if you know what you're building. Another thing too that, that we've wanted, the product designers have wanted, um, is, is right now there's no good way to integrate Webflow with an existing code base. Uh, so our dream tool, our, our, our dream for Webflow would be to sort of build all these views in Webflow and then publish to the Webflow repository. Uh, and then have engineers sort of use those views and hook up logic to them. Um, but we're not there yet. Hopefully we will be, we will be one day um, so that there's, there's not, not that translation layer so that designers have control over uh, the front end at least. So let's show that too. Um, <laughs> the last thing uh, I'll say is that the custom code experience is still lacking a bit in Webflow. Um, you can do a lot of Webflow, but for those situations where you need more functionality to test with your users, uh, it's often helpful to write a little bit of JavaScript to um, give your prototype that extra, that extra functionality you need. Um, we do have ways of doing that. You can add custom code to the header, the footer. Uh, you can even add it, add it inside the, the website through, a, uh, through an embed. Um, but we don't pay too much attention to it, and it's... It could be better. Um, and you're also not able to run JavaScript in the designer. So um, I'm often, a common workflow, workflow for me is writing uh, JavaScript inside the designer, publishing, and then checking out the result on the published side. So um, it's not ideal, but it works for now. Um, and that's about it. Thank you.